Hey guys, Graham Sheldon here from Cinema 5D. We are in Las Vegas at NAB 2018. Right next to me is Grant Petty, founder and CEO of Black Magic Design. And we're here today to talk about some really exciting new updates to DaVinci Resolve. Cinema 5D at NAB 2018 is brought to you by b &H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, your one-stop shop for cine, video, photo, and more. Tilter, arm your camera. And Sigma, the art in every lens. So I understand there's a bunch of new updates to the whole Resolve suite to Fusion, and there may be one in the same now. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so um, what we've done is we've built Fusion into Resolve. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a huge update. I mean, obviously we've got a lot of Fairlight improvements in there as well, and there's still obviously things in editing and color correction. But I think the big thing, if you're gonna sort of pick one really big thing, is we've, you know, we, we, you know by building Fair, uh, Fusion in, we actually get titling and, uh, and paint. So, you know, that's a good thing. But I think what's exciting about Fusion is it, you know, it's like building effects with Lego bricks. And it was a separate product, you know, that we originally got with an acquisition. We'd done a lot of work on the product, but, yeah, we felt like if we could build it into Resolve, not only did we get paint and, and um, titles, ridiculously powerful paint and titles, but we also get everything else. So you can almost get an effects builder. I mean, you can just you know plug nodes together like Lego bricks and build anything you like. So um, it, it's quite a powerful uh, capability. And, and when you combine it with the other tools, I mean, you know, remember you can collaborate between all those you know, systems as well. I mean, you can go, you can start off in the timeline and the edit timeline, click on any clip in there, and you go across to the Fusion page and you see an input and an output node, and they're connected together, and that's the pipeline. That's all you have to do. So you can drop in extra nodes in between, extra effects, and build up all kinds of interesting effects. And when you go back to the edit page, it's just there. There's no import exporting anything. You go to the Fairlight page, and now you're doing audio post production. So you know, it's a, it's a huge update. Um, the Fairlight. Uh, the Fusion side, sorry, obviously gets a big user interface improvement. It's still Fusion, it's still, everything's in the same spots, but the, the finessing of the user interface elements is, is dramatically better. It looks really nice, and um, there's extra capability, like you've got the media pool from Resolve, because you've got Fusion inside Resolve now, so you've got media pool, you can bring extra clips straight in. You've got a, a, a clip browser like you have on the color page, where you can click on an individual clip, and the node graph changes to that clip, so you can change the effects. And when you get back to the edit timeline, it, it, it's just an effect. A lot of times it'll play real time. If it doesn't, it just renders as, a, as an effect. So That's very cool. I think it's pretty powerful. But the edit timeline gets a whole bunch of new text plugins, which are actually fusion compositions. So when you drop an effect in on the edit page, it's actually a fusion comp. When you go over fusion, you can see it's a fusion composition. So there's some amazing power that you get in the edit side because it's there. And that's, I think, what makes the strength. The, the pages in Resolve are individual culture pages. They're not functionality pages. Yeah, you could do, you know, um, editing in other pages, but what matters is that you know, for an audio person, uh, you know, the Fairlight page is the audio post-production environment. So it's it's all even the terminology can often change uh, to the audio post-production terminology versus editing te te you know, terminology or color correction terminology. Um, so I think that yeah, the idea is to bring people together. It's to try and enhance creativity. It's to, it's to give people career paths where they can explore uh, other uh, angles. You know, in some ways, what this does is make uh, simple NLE programs obsolete because you don't have any capability to be just an editor. You're locked into being an editor. Someone, probably an MBA type person, has decided that that's what it is and that's the editing market and you're supposed to be an editor. Screw that. Like, I want to break out and, you know, set fire to the world and do whatever I want. And I shouldn't have to deal with a complex suite of stuff. Uh, this is all free, right? I mean, this uh, capability, it's in the standard DaVinci Resolve. So. What's great is that's going to allow people to sort of like, if you're an editor, you can start to explore some visual effects. And to you, they might just be used for titling. But that's the point. You can explore beyond what you're able to do now. And I think that's the great thing to me, the creative side of having all these things together, is you allow people to explore. And we, we saw that when we had color and, um, and editing together. A lot of editors actually sort of became the facility's colorist because they kind of explored the color side and really liked it. And you don't know that the thing you're doing is the thing that you've always wanted to do for the rest of your life. There's other things to explore. Well, none of the programs actually have that ability in them. You've got to go to a whole separate set of tools. So I think by integrating them all together, you allow people to explore what the future might be. And, if, you know, and, and, and plus, you know, the, the practical side is like you've got to get a, a tight deadline and you've got to tweak an edit and you don't want to go back out and back in and sometimes it's a separate edit on a separate tool, on a separate machine. Uh, you can just go to the edit page, do a quick tweak or go to the audio page and do a you know, quick tweak. So just having that capability can really save a job when the deadline's tight. You know, we're here to empower creativity. That's what we started the company to do. 
this is, I think, a key part of it. It's not something in research into existence. It's just something that feels good. And I don't know what's going to happen now. I don't know how the industry is going to change because of this. It's a huge thing. But I guess that's the cool thing about being at the show. Yeah, of course. And I mean, you want Resolve to be a one-stop shop. I think that's pretty clear. I mean, uh, DaVinci Resolve Forever was the go-to spot for color, right? And then editing, yeah. graphics, audio. Uh, so you want to keep people in that, that ecosystem. Yeah. But it's also important that people can get out of that ecosystem. So we have obviously the ability to export out to other NLEs and Netflix and all the other things. Remember, DaVinci is still the tool that most feature films are finished on. So it's still a very high-end tool as well. So we need to make sure we maintain that. But we don't want to ever dumb it down because you'll cripple that. But at the same time, my philosophy is we shouldn't dumb it down because I've always said to the guys, and I keep repeating, just because you don't have any money doesn't mean to say you're stupid. A lot of companies try to dumb their products down because they want to make a smaller version or a simpler product. Right. That's nice, but you know, if you're young, you just, you're not successful yet. And that doesn't mean to say you want crap. You want a great tool, you want all the power, but you don't put like color decision lists up in your face. You know, you've got to put things where they need. You dig into things. I mean, DaVinci still has EDLs and color decision lists and print lights and all these wacky things from the kind of, from I don't know, the 20s almost, you know. But it doesn't read punch, paper, tape, but it almost could probably do stuff like that. Like it's got a lot of that old world film stuff in it and it's all in there. You just have to open the right window and it's still there. You don't, you know, so I, I guess the answer is, you know, everyone wants to have an answer. It's like, what is this going to do? Yeah, what does this widget do? It. No right, yeah. Supposed to. <laughs> we are supposed to do the tools to make people, like, give people possibilities. And the best bit is watching what people do. And I, it, it's, it's weird, you, you spend all this time developing something with absolutely no answer on what it's actually going to be used for, which is kind of hard to do. But it's the right thing to do. I think that's, like I was saying to someone the other day, that everything I've seen about business culture destroys creativity. And sometimes it's because the definitions of what the end result should be are too well defined. Like they're too sharp. It's like, well, hang on, what about taking a leap of faith? That's what creativity is. And so we have to do the same thing. And then what happens is, who knows what's going to happen? It's exciting. I'm nervous to find out, you know, what's going to happen. But I, I think the good thing is all the Fusion guys we've showed it to, love it. In fact, they say they have a hard time going back to the old Fusion because you've got things like the media pool and clip selection. It's so easy to integrate with the editing side. So, and it looks so much better too. So I think they're all uh, pretty happy. Very cool. Well, thank you very much, Grant. Uh, I think that's the time that we have. So there you have it, guys. A bunch of updates to Resolve. Fusion, now part of Resolve. And uh, yeah, it sounds like really is a uh, one-stop shop. I'm excited to get a chance to, uh, to mess around with it. Thank you very much. No thank you.